things, we wanted to take this time to just review the application and go through the guidelines with everyone. So I'm going to share my screen. <clears throat> Can you see? Yes. Okay. I want full view. Okay. I can't do this. You can see, right, everyone? So I'll just to the overview of the two streams. And there we go, that's better. So one of the questions uh, folks are asking is about the two streams. You can only apply for one. Um, so you have to select between general operating support or artist fellowships. Um, and the difference between the two is really, it's pretty straightforward if you're an individual artist, you're applying for the artist fellowship, but for LLCs, um, you can apply for either one. But the difference with uh, general operating support is that requires uh, two things, a funding match and financial documentation. So if you are a NORC based arts and cultural nonprofit or LLC, I should say, with an annual budget up to $2 million. The grant range is $2,500 to $25,000. If your request is over $5,000, you have to provide a funding match. And so what's a, fund, what's, a, what's a match? That would be a copy of an award letter that you received from another grant, um, it could be uh, contracts that you've received, letters of agreement, or also uh, a record of sales. So say for instance, uh, you're an LLC and you've sold uh, $20,000 worth of art in 2020. Um, you would compile those um, records, invoices, what have you, into one PDF document. And that would be part of your documentation for a match to apply for the grant. However, you also need your uh, tax records, your 990. And so um, that's really, I think, the deciding factor for a lot of LLCs. If you do not have your 2019 or 2020 IRS 990 forms, um, you might want to just consider applying as an artist collective under artist fellowships. And that grant is up to $10,000. So you must also be based in Newark and have an art and culture focused mission. Your programming must be accessible to the public. So if you're say for instance, a nonprofit that does some type of other work, but you're looking for uh, funds for arts programming, this isn't necessarily the grant for you um, because this is specifically for art and culture organizations. We wish we could fund everyone, all projects and all people, but um, we have to prioritize our art organizations and artists here in Newark. How can you use the funds? The funds, uh, again, you, they're very flexible in how you can use them. You can apply it to rent, staff salaries, artist payments, programming expenses, uh, studios. If you have um, artists, artists who have studios um, in your space, you can use these funds to subsidize their rent. Um, you can use it for supplies and equipment, professional development workshops for your staff, or for um, uh, arts, art, art, artists, and art, other art organiza organizations, um, and other costs incurred as a result of COVID-19. So again, these are some of the required application materials I mentioned. You also need your state certification of nonprofit incorporation or uh, your LLC documentation. 
you also need three to five work samples. So that can come in the form of video, uh, photography, JPEGs, or also links to any press coverage or information on your website about programming that you have done over the past two or three years. For artist fellowships, um, individual artists can apply, unincorporated artist collectives can apply, or LLCs can apply. But you must reside in Newark or have an artist studio or workspace in Newark, at least 18 years of age and not a full-time higher education student. The funds can be used for studio rehearsal or other creative workspace, supplies or equipment rentals, project specific expenses, or other costs incurred as a result of COVID. The only thing that you really need for this application is proof of residence or proof of your creative workspace. Uh, that would be lease or some type of um, official mail. You also wanna provide three to five samples of recent relevant work. If you have additional questions, of course, you can always email me directly. My email address is shakorf at ci.north.com. US. But I also want to go and take a look at the North Arts website where you can find uh, not just the application, but also the guidelines and a fact sheet here. So some of the other questions I've received have been about um, how do we score these applications? Um, and so one of the most important things, of course, yes, quality of the work that's being submitted, but also your impact, your social or community impact. So you wanna make sure that in the explanation of your work, you're also describing any previous work that, that you've done in the city of Newark, contributing um, to the city, um, or also uh, anything you've done you know, um, around activism, social impact, you just wanna amplify and highlight that work. And so we'll again have um, a selection committee that will review the application scored with a certain rubric. Um, and there are also questions about um, how are the award amounts decided? And that's really based upon the score. So applications with the highest score or perfect score uh, will receive the full amount as much as we can fund according to availability of funds of the grant um, request that they make. Feel free to post any additional questions you have in the chat and I'd be happy to answer them. And that's all from me, Jeremy. Thank you, Miami. Let me turn on my video. Thank you, Fayemi Shakur, for that, that overview. Um, are there any questions in the chat for Fayemi or other questions for Fayemi before we move on? Jewel Singletary raised her hand. Jewel, do you want to pop on and ask your question? Yes. Oh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Fayemi. That was a great overview. Two questions for you. One, what is the deadline to submit applications? You're muted, Miami. Miami. You're muted. <laughs> Sorry, the deadline is April 16th at 11.59 p.m. Okay, thank you. And the second question is, um, Could the funds go to, um, um, you know, just for the transparency sake, my thoughts are um, perhaps planning a series of restorative yoga classes for um, the city of Newark and perhaps partnering with the space similar to, I, I love the classes that you did at um, the City Without Walls, the art, art, gallery space so partnering with a space like that to host 
restorative yoga classes that would be free for community members. And what I'm thinking of is utilizing the funds to develop the classes, but also to develop tools that we would need for the classes like yoga bolsters and um, blankets and things like that. So with the funds, could I utilize them for product development in that sense? Unfortunately not. Um, as I said, th this Creative Catalyst Fund is really to support artists and art organizations. And so yoga um, classes and things like that would be considered more of a small business. It's not that art organizations and artists aren't small businesses, um, but it doesn't necessarily fall under um, artistic um, programming. Um. Oh, okay. So then what if, so I'm also a therapeutic art coach. So if I were hosting therapeutic art classes in a space for Newark, that, that could fit. Absolutely. Art yeah. classes. Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. So you, in your application, you just want to make sure you describe um, those art classes. Yes, for sure. I will. Thank you. Okay, and I that. also have partnered with um, the Newark Center for Meditative Culture and um, Newark First Fridays to host therapeutic art um, classes for those organizations. So I think that could be applicable. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. What is considered art? I think you know the answer to that question. It's too early for philosophy. <laughs> um, I understand your question, though. You can always email me again if you have uh, specific questions. And Sherry McGee has her hand raised. Yes, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for um, doing this Zoom call, uh, this informative. Um, I am a self-employed um, singer and I was looking to host an informative for additional uh, singers and upcoming um, singers uh, wanting to get into the business um, professionally. And I was looking to possibly host a, um, an informative regarding uh, some of the ins and outs of being a, a background vocalist, um, being in the union and those type of things. Um, I don't have an LLC right now but do I have to have an LLC to host that type of event um, with uh, the grant? No, you don't have to have an LLC. You can apply to the Artist Fellowship stream. Um, you want to make sure you provide uh, samples of your work and describe the program that you are talking about that you'd like to do. Um, and as much as you can share about uh, when, not necessarily when, but how um, you will present this. Will you present it in person? Will it be a virtual program? How will you market it? Um, things like that would be helpful to strengthen your application. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other questions, Heather? There, I'm, I was talking on mute. I, I don't see any other uh, questions okay. in the chat. No one else has a hand raised. So I will start sharing my screen and let me just get this up. This way. Okay. And the first grant that uh, New York Arts will be discussing will be the Art Start grant. Um, Jeremy, did you want to do this or do you want me to continue? Please continue. I'll try the necessary. Please continue, Heather. Okay. So the Art Start grant is um, a grant for a collaboration that New York Arts has been doing for, I believe, it's 20 years now. And um, this is a grant to get um, out to, sorry, my dog is in the background. Um, for Newark's nonprofit organizations, it's for schools and it's for individual artists to provide art-based projects throughout the city's five wards. 
Uh, the grant range is three thousand uh, dollars. We have fifty thousand dollars that we are putting out into the streets of Newark for this. And um, what we ask is that you go to newarkarts.org uh, slash artstart and the applications are there. There is an info session if you have never applied for this grant uh, before you are required to watch this. It was a pre-recorded info session and there are guidelines there that you can download and um, to begin the application. Uh, the application is on submittable, so um, as is the Creative Catalyst and the emergency grant. So when you do that, you will have to register an account in submittable, and then and then you'll proceed to the questions. Um, are there? Does anybody have any questions about the Art Start grant, or is there anything? Yeah, I'll just add in, thank you, Heather. Um, so I just wanted to double emphasize what Heather said. Art Start grants um, are really about collaborations. So it's for programs that are collaborative in nature uh, in, the city of, in the city of Newark with our schools, with our children, with our seniors, with other artists. Um, so it's really not only about a specific artist's creative work, but it's about the collaborative work of that artist or creative with with other other parts of our, our community and particularly in our neighborhoods that that has always been a key emphasis of the art star grants um, we did say the grant range is three thousand dollars i guess it'd be more specific to say the grant is three thousand dollars it's not a range um, so because it is 3,000, there are only a limited number of slots, if you do the math, 50,000 divided by 3,000. So um, we encourage you to look through those, uh, through the uh, application details uh, very clearly. So any questions about the Art Start grants? Again, this has been going on for quite a while. Uh, we have our panelists are, are from the community and from beyond who understand uh, the needs of the community. Uh, and Ms. Lena Darkey, ha Lena Darkey has a question. Forgive me for that, um, your name. That's fine. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. No. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, great. So um, I am constructing a project for um, the Art Start uh, grants uh, with a neighborhood association, um, and it's a public art project. Um, I have approach them uh, but uh, my question is the their um, their nonprofit is basically a neighborhood association because I want to work with people's you know uh, with the seniors from this neighborhood and their homes and display a form of uh, a project on several homes of this neighborhood but the organization itself is not an arts organization I'm an artist obviously uh, but they're not is that an issue? I love it. We love that. We're absolutely about art okay. crossing disciplines. So as long as art is at the focus of the project, if it's a neighborhood association that is applying, that would not be a problem whatsoever. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Thanks. Um, can I ask something uh, on top of this? Just since everybody's here now. Um, I approached one neighborhood association for this because it's the one I know from obviously my neighborhood. Um, and is there any way that I can find somewhere like a list of other neighborhood associations from Newark? Uh, because I'm sure so, there are many. That is a fair question. It's uh, unfortunately, it's the capacity of Art Start or Newark Arts to do that. We don't have the capacity to do that for the applicants. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but yeah, we yeah, don't have course, a list. <laughs> I mean, there may be some lists <laughs> out there. Yeah. So Maybe I'm, I am. You know, yeah, that yeah. Would, yeah. The city. yeah. Um, I was going to say you can email Newark People's Assembly. And yes. I'm, and I'm sure they would uh, have that information. Uh, Newark People's Assembly at Gmail. Okay, great. That's the information I was looking for. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Fame. Thank you so much. Bye. Yeah. Are there any other Art Start questions at this time? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go to 
the next screen, the next um, the next grant that we're going to talk about is Newark's art newest grant, and this is the Newark Art Emergency Fund. And um, we are able to do this because uh, we received a fund from the New Jersey Arts and Cultural Recovery Fund. And we have $50,000 that we will be putting into the hands of Newark residential artists. You have to reside in Newark to receive this grant. It's a mini grant, it's $1,000. Um, and we're hoping to have a quick turnaround with this. The application is open until April 9th. Uh, it's a short application, and we ask that you just provide some information about um, your art artistic statement, um, some some of your lost income, because this is a needs based um, application. So, um, are there any questions about about this fund or how to access it? No? Okay, is there any other information about this fund that I should be providing? Heather, I would just reemphasize that all of these grants do require the applicants to uh, sign up for what's called Submittable. Submittable is a software program that manages applications and proposals and um, and once you're in that system, it's a great system to be in because you can hear about other uh, calls for artists. But you have to be in the platform for Submittable. If you're not already registered for Submittable, uh, it won't hurt you to, to do that right now, <laughs> to do yeah, that at any time. It's really very easy. Um, if you go to Newark Arts um, and you go to our application, when you're here, it's going to ask you for an email. If if you do not have one, um, you know, if you do not have an account, we can, you know, create an account. Oops. There. there you go. And see if I don't have an account here. Um, so what I would want to do is sign up, sorry. And so we'll do that again. And then I'll create a password which can be anything. And then I put in my name and then you sign up. Oh, apparently I've done this before, but, <laughs> but it will take you in then to the application. And, and once you are in there, um, let's, let's try this. I have so many applications. I have so many accounts now with submittable that. So no. I okay. So I will not be able to do this with us today. I'm so sorry. Um. But but if there are any questions, it really is an easy easy process to do. Um. I will share, Heather. I will share that. The way that now, once you're in Submittable, you, your yeah. application will be there, the yes. communication to you about the, where, where we are with the, yes. uh, and the process of your application will all be in the Submittable uh, uh, on, uh, on that particular platform. So it makes it a lot easier um, if you wanna find any previous emails related to your application, the status of your application, uh, our, our communication to you. And this goes for all of, the three uh, programs we're talking about today, and they right. will be so using that formidable it, you platform. Come back. You, you don't have to complete the application in one sitting. It will save everything. So. And then we but do I, have, go ahead. I just want to emphasize, but the three applications are separate. Each, yes. each application is its own separate application. Uh, let me make that very clear. Each program is its own application. Each has its own uh, panel of jurists. Um, we're doing this really as a service to the field to bring these all together because these are all happening during the same month. And we really wanted you all to get some sense. There was some confusion about if you apply for one, can you also apply for the other? Um, there is nothing that keeps you from applying for all three if you are eligible for all three or for two of the three or for one of the three. The main thing is your eligibility, um, but they are all independent 
uh, application processes. So for the emergency grant, we do stress that you must be a resident in Newark. For Art Start, you do not need to be a resident of Newark, but you need to impact and collaborate in Newark in one of the five wards. And I believe that's the same for the Creative Catalyst Fund. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that because I think some people, uh, some of the applications we received last year were artists who, um, or, or artists who maybe were focused on their own individual um, projects that they wanted to do. And of course, that's great and we encourage that. But even still, you want to, in your application, demonstrate the social impact of your project. Even if you're doing, um, say, a painting series, um, that's my coffee maker in the background. Even if um, it's a painting series, maybe in your description, you want to demonstrate or, or talk about the work and um, the themes that are present in your work and how that work um, makes a social impact. So it's um, either through the work or through your collaborative community engagement, how you can demonstrate that. And um, I'm hoping that you know will give people a little bit more clarity in how to present stronger applications. Thank you, thank you for that. And then um, there are, we. I, I put up the link, I guess, um, to other resources. There are many, many um, other resources available to the artist community. And here are just a few of them. Um, and I'm sharing my screen, Heather, and I'll, I'll oh, go through Okay, this. you have more, good, thank you. Yeah. I don't know if you can see this. Let me just get my screen ready. Okay. Just these are just a few other other resources beyond the three that we talked about today. I just um, we don't have all the answers for all of these, but the point is for our creative and artist community, um, with a little bit of research, and yes, it's going to take some time to look through these. There are other pots of money, absolutely. Uh, for artists to go after uh, that may be helpful for for your uh, for your purposes. One of the largest, of course, is the National Endowment for the Arts. They have a deadline coming up. Oops, I just moved it. There you go. Uh, they have a deadline coming up. We will put this link into. Well, this is recorded, but we'll put this link into the the uh, shared. Um, there's a grant for artists, or I'm sorry, for small organizations for projects in all artistic disciplines that extend the reach of the arts to populations that are underserved. It's called the Challenge America Grant from the National Endowment for the Arts. Uh, the grants are set at $10,000. They do require a cost share of $10,000. The total project cost must be at least $20,000 or greater. Now, uh, they do. you do have to pre-register. Um, and I can't say if this deadline is, is solid with the, you have to pre-register for SAM.gov. SAM that is a government site that registers all people who apply for government dollars and also grants.gov. Um, I know the first one says March 30th for SAM.gov. That may be flexible. I, it probably is, but they just wanted you to give your time, self time. These registration processes do take time. So you don't want to do it the day that the grant is due because you, you may not make it. So they said, give yourself a couple of weeks to get the, those registrations in. The actual proposal deadline for this particular grant is April 22nd for part one and April 27th for part two. So by the mere fact that it has a part one and part two does tell you that this is a little bit of red tape, quite a bit of red tape. So like anything, you're going to have to weigh the cost benefit analysis. Is it worth your time to go, go through all of this? Uh, look at it and determine that. You may say, it's not worth my time. I'd rather focus on what is, is steady and sure that won't take hours and hours or I need to bring in someone else. So this is the first one. Let me continue to another resource. Come on. The Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. This is really for uh, for entities or businesses or locations that have in the past had live performances and that's really the majority of of where in your income is made but you have not been able to do that 
for the last year. Um, uh, so th that's for uh, those who have had live performances, uh, venues, um, but have not been able to do that. There is much more details, much more in depth at the website that I've got listed. This could be its own two hour webinar, but I won't go into that. But if you are or know of someone who is a shuttered venue, uh, please check it out. Next is artistrelief.org. This is a fabulous resource for individual artists. It's not for artists organizations. It's, it's, it's sort of like our emergency grant that we're doing, but it's national. It's funded by national funders and the grants are at $5,000. They do, someone asked earlier, what is art? Or uh, They really do have limited to the kinds of artists that they're looking at. What we think of as traditional artists, you know, music and dance and theater, uh, painting, uh, media, film, um, and they do list the things that they do not focus on, other types of creative arts, like culinary arts, things that uh, sometimes are in those gray areas. But do check out artistrelief.org. They will be oversubscribed. Again, this is a national funding, so, uh, but I think it's worth, any artist who's on this line, it's worth checking out. Do not leave that money on the table, and we would love for Newark artists and Newark area artists to apply for this. Finally, for arts organizations in Newark and the Newark area, please do apply for the New Jersey Arts and Culture Recovery Fund. Again, special thanks to that group. Uh, of this is a privately funded entity funded by uh, foundations uh, and corporations in partnership with the New Jersey State Council on the Arts and others, but this is privately funded by uh, many arts lovers in the state. Uh, th they have announced a new round of funding, and if you did not receive funding in the first round, if you are a small arts organization, please do complete this. And full disclosure, as you all know, Newark Arts did receive funding for this, and we actually were able to pass the funds now on to individual artists. But they have another big round of funding that they've just announced. Let me see if I can open it, because I don't have the deadline here. I know it's coming up. I can't open it right now. Go to this website. I will put all of these in the chat. This will also be pre-recorded. So that completes my list of links to other resources. And we're going to open this up for questions if anyone has them. Okay, there is a question on the line. Will there be a recording or transcript of the Zoom available after the meeting? So I uh, let me check with my staff to be sure uh, that we set this up with that possibility. Ruby and that's nodding her head yes. So yes, the answer is yes. This recording will be shared, absolutely. Wonderful, and Jer Jeremy, I just wanted to chime in in case folks didn't know, this isn't grant fund related, but the city of Newark has really expanded its vaccination program and is working in partnership with the state. And all day today and tomorrow, you can go to NJIT on the corner of Lock and Bleecker Streets to obtain a free vaccination shot. And you don't even have to register or anything. You can just walk up all day today and tomorrow. So um, if you haven't been vaccinated yet, and you would like to be, today and tomorrow is a good day to stop by NJIT at the corner of Lock and Bleecker to get your vaccination. That is amazing news and special thanks to the mayor and the governor and whoever else was responsible for that. I live just a, a block away from NJIT and it's great to see all of the officials there. Uh, it's very well organized. Um, please do get your vaccination. This uh, this will help you as an individual and will help us as an industry to, to open up again. And there is a question, uh, Lamore Boyd. Hi, good morning. How's Hi, everyone? Good. Um, Great. And happy Easter weekend to you. Um, if my daughter is an artist. Uh, she has an art and a math degree um, from the state, uh, college in the state of New Jersey. Uh, but she doesn't have artist space, so there's a lot of painting going on in my current apartment. 
And so I want to know, because I was trying to get her to join this, and I'm actually traveling. I'm, I'm pulled over parking, so, uh, but I didn't want to miss this meeting. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to try to assist her in getting uh, on to some of these funds because she uh, she needs an artist space, um, and I'd like her to have one. That was, we just had this conversation earlier in the week. Uh, I'd like to move the painting and the easels and the drafting boards out of my home. Uh, I'd like to have uh, paint-free sheets. <laughs> <laughs> and carpets again. So how can I assist my daughter? Uh, Fayemi, do you want to take that? Yeah, I'm going to let Fayemi take that. I, I can back up Fayemi with some ideas after that. But Fayemi, do you want to start? I just love that she tuned in just so she could find out more about that for her daughter. That's so awesome. And I hear you. I hear you. You want you want to have a paint-free home. So there are a few studio spaces that she can check out. Um, okay. One is Project for Empty Space at 800 Broad Street. Uh -huh. Another is Gallery of Ferro. Um, what is that? I believe Gallery of Ferro's address is 73 Market. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so um, those are kind of our two central spaces. Um, and even if she was to reach out to them now and see what space they had available, she could also apply for the Creative Catalyst Fund if she had a letter of agreement from one of those spaces um, indicating that they're, they're willing to hold a space for her. It should tell us how much the rent is and it should indicate in her request for funds that she would like to apply her grant to the rent at this uh, studio, but she would have to contact those organizations first, confirm a space or availability, and then include that um, letter or agreement um, in her application. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And then, um, thank you, Fanny. And I am, uh, I, I've just I've bounced back to what Jeremy was talking about before the New Jersey Arts and Cultural Recovery Fund. The application deadline is April twelfth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. For that I'm one. gonna. Um, oh. As soon as I get home, I'm gonna pass this along to her. Great. Thank you for joining us, and thanks for advocating for your daughter. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. That's I love the arts. Don't get, don't get me started, but uh, absolutely. And I appreciate you guys for having this this morning. Really appreciate you all. We have a question here. Are there any spaces for vocal artists to use? That's a good question. I have an answer or a few answers. Fayemi, do you want to begin with that one? You can take it, Jeremy. So th this is the answer is yes, but there are not nearly enough. Uh, there are not, uh, and since the COVID shutdown, spaces such as uh, whether it's been um, La Rouge Lounge, where I've heard singers, or Clem's Place, or uh, other smaller spaces around town, are you know, it, it's been tough. So this is a challenge of our time to try to get more spaces for all kinds of art, especially for performing arts. I'm really excited to say that nearly 100 live workspaces for artists to live and work will be coming online this year between uh, 505 Clinton Avenue. And that will be a space where uh, for that have a, will have a multi-purpose space for, for vocal artists to live. That space is now known as the Gant Gilbert Artist Collective, 505 Clinton Avenue. If you drive by there now, you'll see that it's completing construction, that will have a place for vocal artists to use. Um, also, uh, uh, there is the um, makers, Makerhood space, uh, which is rising right next to the Kruger Scott Mansion on Martin Luther King Boulevard. Um, that will have uh, different kinds of small spaces and other spaces, and uh, including spaces that, that could be amenable to some performing arts. Then there's, of course, New York Symphony Hall, which is going through a dramatic transformation. Um, Fayemi is the chair of the board there, uh, but you can look forward to that coming. Uh, 
down the road, there's so many different spaces in, in New York Symphony Hall. Um, other spaces are at our larger institutions, Rutgers, the, the New York Museum of Art, New Jersey Performing Arts Center, um, and let's not forget places like the New York School of the Arts. Um, oh, a wonderful space that, that is, wants to become available for more of the community is what's called the Jewish Museum located at Ahava Shalom. I've been in many conversations there. They really want to be of service to the community. Their space has free parking. They have an elevator. They have space that in the past that has been used for gallery spaces and performances in partnership with WBGO and New Jersey Performing Arts Center. Uh, reach out to Ahava Shalom. Eric Friedman is the president of the board there. Really wanting to be open and uh, free and even free to the artist community. Um, and he's very uh, amenable. They, they are underutilized, he said, and their, 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 their community wants to be of use as they have in the past. So those are just some ideas uh, that, that I would share with Ruby Annette. Thank you for that question. Thank you. If there are no other questions, Ahava Shalom is located on Broadway, uh, in North Broadway. Um, can you put, put up their at their link here? Um, uh, I'm going to do what everybody else would do. I'm just going to go to Google and find it real quick. Because <laughs> uh, I wasn't expecting that question, but it came aboard. So here, it's also called the, the um, uh, all right, I'm just going to give you a link for that right now. Put that in to the link. It's also the home of the Jewish Museum. Any other questions? Uh, it's always great to bring artists together and creatives together in the city of New York. We haven't been able to do that as often. Um, and there will be more things coming up. Please stay in constant contact with newarcarts.org. Sign up for our, our mailing list. There are convenings for uh, all kinds of artists and creatives that we have planned for the coming month, not to mention the Newark Arts Festival. Uh, when the call for that will be going out in the next uh, uh, in the next um, couple months, so please do stay in touch and watch those emails. I know you get so many of them, but please do watch the New York Arts email. Please do watch the City of Newark emails with important information for all of us. So with that, I'm going to thank Fayemi Shakur. I'm going to thank the New York Arts team for being here. Uh, unless anyone has any final announcements, we're going to wish you all. Uh, a happy holiday for those that of you who are celebrating uh, this Easter weekend and other holidays that are happening. We wish you all a, a, a wonderful, a wonderful spring weekend. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, Jeremy and all. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Very good.